Some of you are suffering from lower back pain across your both of the hips. So I'm going to show you the exercises I do to relieve that tension. When I started this, I did it seven days a week. Now that I have corrected whatever constant pain I was in, I now do it four times a week. Or if I feel the tension coming on, I'll do it before I go to bed that night. First off, sit on the very edge of a chair. You wanna make sure that your knees are directly over your ankles. I don't want your feet tucked under. We're gonna keep it flat. And then we're gonna cross one ankle over the other knee. In doing this, you are actually stretching the inner thigh and releasing any tension across the lower back, mostly on the opposite side of the leg that you're crossing. So if I'm crossing with my left leg, I'm relieving tension or relieving pull on the right side of my hips as well as the inner thigh on the left side. Now, I'm sitting with slouchy posture and I'm relaxing my wrists on my leg. Every once in a while, if I really am having like neck problems or shoulder tension, I will also drop my chin. I am making a C with my back. So the only thing I'm stretching right now is my inner thigh Sometimes you'll feel a pull across your knee if your knee is exceptionally tight as well. You should not be in pain. You should have that slight tension moving into relaxation. Keep the breathing relaxed in through your nose, out through your mouth. A general guideline for me is if the right side of my back is hurting, I will cross the left leg first and vice versa. If my left side is hurting, I will cross the right leg first. My general rule of thumb with time is when I feel any tension that was there initially has subsided, then I'll switch sides. So this knee seems to have relaxed completely. So I'm gonna gently put it back down, make sure my knee is over my ankle, no tucking in, no extending out. And then I'm gonna take the other leg and cross it over. Now, this is generally, this right back of my hip is generally where I am the tightest. So this knee is almost always higher in the start of the stretch. Once again, I relax my arms over my legs my heel is directly under my knee and I should start to really feel the knee start to drop, stretching or releasing any tension across the lower back. Like I said before, if you want to, you can go ahead and tuck your chin if you have shoulder and or neck tension. Keep the breathing relaxed. I can feel this leg actually dropping quicker than um, it usually does. So obviously I'm not completely tight. Keep the breathing relaxed in through the nose, out through the mouth. And while my knee is not completely dropped compared to the other side, the tension is now about the same. So now I'll move on to the next exercise. On the next exercise, you're actually gonna squeeze your butt in. And when you squeeze your butt in, you're actually tilting your pelvis forward from the bottom. So if you had to think about it, when you do a reverse crunch and you bring your knees into your chest, that's the same rounding of the pelvis 
forward. Um, you really want to squeeze your butt on this one. Try not to use your abs. You're going to go down onto all fours, onto your forearms in what I call froggy position. Froggy position to me is splitting of the knees. My heels or ankles are in line with my knees. I don't have my toes tucked up behind me. I have my legs out to the side and I'm going to be on my forearms. I'm going to drop my shoulders and relax my neck. Then I'm going to squeeze my buns and round my pelvis in, making a C with my back. I'm not using my abs. I'm squeezing my booty each time I arch my back. Six, seven, squeeze the booty, lift the back, eight nine, squeeze the butt, 11, 12, 13. If your buns are weak, you will have a hard time isolating the muscle. So just think, squeeze, squeeze. One more, that's 20. Hold it and relax and sit back. Modified child's pose, you're letting your booty drop between your feet. Take one hand, plant it on the floor, twist a little bit. You might feel a pop in your spine or lower back or hips. Put that hand back, repeat on the other side little twist, you might feel a little pop. Keep your, keep your breathing relaxed. And then go ahead and walk it back in. And then the last exercise that I do is a straight leg donkey kick or bent leg donkey kick. I've been doing straight leg lately. Um, just because I've been trying to focus on pointing my toes and keeping my knees straight for this. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. So I'm down on all fours. I'm going to straighten my leg. I'm not going to lift my hips. I'm going to keep my hips dropped and I'm going to squeeze from the bun. Two, three. If I'm doing bent leg, it's heel to the ceiling. Four, five, Use the booty cheek, six, seven, eight. Don't raise your hips, nine, 10. Other side, take it out, drop the hip, 10. Squeeze the butt, nine. Don't lift, don't rotate your hips. Keep them parallel to the floor, seven, squeeze, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Switch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Switch. Squeeze the butt. Keep the hips dropped. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last time through for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side, ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now I am not your doctor, so if they're telling you to do something specific, follow their advice. I am basing this on personal experience of how I've helped myself and other customers or clients that I've had through the years. I know it works when my hip flexor 
shoulders and my inner thighs are super, super tight and my butt muscles and my lower back is completely weak because most of us sit in this 90 degree angle in a chair for what, six hours a day? Um, that's minus the two hours of getting up and down and doing other things. But if you're sitting like this, you have completely stretched these muscles and weakened them. You have completely tightened these muscles and also weakened them. Um, so what we're trying to do with the exercises that I showed you today is rebalance how the pelvis is tilted underneath you. Hope this helps. Like I said, when I first did it, I did do it seven days a week. Once I corrected the pain or the discomfort, then I do it about four times a week now. But if you're in enough pain, you'll be consistent till the pain goes away. Be safe.